Are you trying to get autophagy and go into the autophagy zone? You should because it's pretty damn awesome. But before you do that, watch this video about the mistakes of autophagy that basically stop autophagy and break the fast. There are a few known ways of activating autophagy, but the surest and most effective are probably caloric restriction and intermittent fasting. You're not eating anything. We can't measure autophagy in humans directly, but we know that low insulin and low amino acid and glucose deficiencies suppress mTOR, which supports autophagy. So here are the few mistakes of autophagy you would want to avoid. Number one, you're not fasting long enough. You don't start fasting immediately after finishing your last meal because you need to first digest the nutrients you ate. The post-absorptive state of metabolism lasts about 4 hours after the meal you've eaten. In reality, you enter the fast state only after about 5-6 to six hours of not eating because prior to that, you're still fed and you're burning the calories you ate. On a 16-20 to 20 hour fast, you've only actually spent time in a fast state for about 12 hours, which probably isn't enough to trigger autophagy. It's Number two, fat in your coffee. It's true that fat doesn't spike insulin the same way carbs or protein do, but it will still elevate mTOR and put you in a fat state. Ketone bodies do stimulate chaperone mediated autophagy and macroautophagy in the brain, but in reality that happens primarily during starvation. You can boost autophagy a little bit by adding some ketone boosting fats into your meals, like MCT oil or something like that, but there's a thing that excess calories whether from carbs, protein, or fat, they're gonna still raise mTOR and stop autophagy. 3. BCAs Branched chain amino acids stop the fast and stop autophagy quite fast because they're pure amino acids. The only time you can get away with them is during some exercise where you're already burning through glucose and you have elevated blood sugar. Number 4. Artificial sweeteners Zero calorie sweeteners raise insulin via the cephalic phase response that prepares the release of insulin in the gut. 5. Supplements with calories. A vitamin D or krill oil capsule has a bit of fat, but it's quite low, and maybe like 1 to 2 capsules probably don't break a fast or interfere with autophagy. Likewise, some herbal supplements like turmeric, berberine, or mushroom complex have an insignificant effect as well, and they may actually boost autophagy. The problem is that if you start taking a lot of supplements, different complexes, different herbs, then all of those calories will eventually add up and there's gonna be like a tipping point where you probably stop this process and you break autophagy. If you're fasting any less than five to seven days, then you don't even need to take supplements because you're not going to go deficient and it's actually better to not consume any supplements during this period at all. Number six, circadian rhythm mismatches. Most of autophagy gets activated during deep sleep. The same applies to growth hormone which is released the most between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. If you want to optimize autophagy, then it's better to go to bed a bit earlier and prioritize the first hours of sleep because that's where most of physical repair occurs in your body. Number seven, not doing prolonged fasts. Let's be real here. If you're not doing any form of extended fasting beyond 24 hours, then you can't really expect to gain some significant autophagy either. I personally aim for a three to five day fast every other month and I usually have like 2 to 3 48 hour fasts per month. This may change every once in a while depending on what I'm doing, but I think the kind of golden rule is to aim for a 3 day fast once a quarter at least. Possibly. Number 8. Fasting too long too frequently. If you're starting to lose muscle or you become too weak, then you're having too long fasts too frequently. Someone who has a lot of weight to lose can safely fast for days back to back and lose a bunch of fat. Leaner and physically active people can't fast that long, but they shouldn't make it an excuse not to fast either. The most important thing for fasting and autophagy is consistency. You shouldn't think that, okay, I'm gonna fast for 10 days of the year, and the rest of the time I'm gonna eat like garbage. Having these slightly shorter fasts of either 48 hours to 72 hours more frequently on a consistent basis, that's probably a lot healthier and a lot better than fasting really hard and then, you know, <laughs> falling off the rails. <clears throat> Number nine, not getting enough nutrients while you're eating. On a fasting focused lifestyle, if your eating frequency is very low, then the nutrient density of those meals should be that much higher because you're not eating that often. There are many nutrients that are also required for autophagy to do its work properly. The most nutrient dense foods are things like pastured eggs, wild fish, beef, organ meats, low carb berries, herbs, spices, some tubers, vegetables, and a little bit of fruit. Overconsuming calories is also not optimal because 
you'll simply have to burn through that calories first before you can go back into autophagy. Number 10, not getting enough exercise. If you're fasting but you're not exercising, then you should start exercising. Likewise, if you are exercising but not fasting, then you should at least do some form of daily time or shift eating. Exercise and resistance training are another amazing way of promoting autophagy and getting the other health benefits. If you want to know how to avoid the mistakes of trying to get into autophagy but accidentally stopping it, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. Disappoint!